Hi everyone, it's been a while since I posted any of my YNAB tutorials or anything else for that matter. I just wanted to share today, I've been getting a lot of questions about how to set up YNAB and how to get started using it. And I don't have time to do one-on-ones right now, so I just thought I'd post a video and just um, present like a, a brief introduction of this is how you set up YNAB and this is how you start using it just um, very quickly. The first thing we need to do is to tell YNAB about our cash, bank, and credit card balances. So we'll go through quickly how to add an account. While that's showing, I just wanted to mention we need to keep our perspective about how different YNAB is from other budgeting softwares. So it's not about just adding up all your income and subtracting all your expenses, but instead we're assigning a job to each and every dollar. So that's the point of setting up all these accounts. We're going to look at the accounts look at the balances and determine what we need to do with our money. Here I'm adding a cash account, um, checking, savings, two credit cards, and then I also like to add my reward balances for my credit cards and track those in YNAB. I also recommend that you actually link um, your accounts, at least your credit card accounts, in YNAB by entering your username, password, and um, importing those transactions. Next, we're going to go through setting up YNAB categories. You'll see they set up the Visa and the MasterCard categories automatically when you set up your credit card. And then it's just going to go through setting up um, categories the way I prefer to set up mine. So you can find the way that I set up my YNAB categories if you go to www.makingyourmoneymatter.com slash YNAB. Um, it's a, an email list subscription, but then you get the, a PDF of all the categories that I prefer to set up in YNAB. So it's really important that you set up your categories in the most useful way possible for you. So personally, I like to have quite a few categories and really be able to track my spending um, for things such as groceries versus eating out rather than just having one food category. But if it's more useful and you'll be more likely to use it to set up just a few really broad categories, um, that's really the most important part of budgeting is doing something that you will actually use. I wanted to show exactly how I set up the categories, so I've included a full video of setting up each and every one of these categories. You can skip forward a little if you like, um, but I did want to show that. I have it on four times speed, so the total time it took to set up all these categories was 14 minutes. So no more excuses about how long it's going to take you to get it all set up. You can do all of this account set, um, categories everything and even start within half an hour. So it really doesn't take that long. Just um, some tips about setting up the categories. The way YNAB does it is if you set up the master category, it always defaults to being the category at the top. So if you wanted to just delete absolutely everything they have and start setting up your categories, you would want to start with the categories um, that will be on the bottom of your budget. So for me, that would be like holiday and non-recurring expenses. Subcategories are the same. So for example, the main category would be food. The subcategory would be groceries and eating out. It's going to put um, whatever new subcategory that you set up on the top. So if you start from the bottom categories or subcategories, um, it will be a little bit more efficient for you. All right, now we're going to start with creating your initial budget. 
So of course your initial budget is a little bit more tricky because you're not just budgeting for the month, but you're also budgeting all these amounts that you have here on the left side. So every dollar that you have right now, you have to assign a purpose. In your first budget, you probably have some that you've already set aside for savings that now you need to allocate. So we'll start with the credit cards. In this example, I'm assuming this is someone that pays their credit card off in full every month. So we'll put the, the initial balances here. If you don't pay your credit card balance every month in these amounts, instead of putting the full balance, I transferred these um, from over here, you would just put what amount you have that you can put towards your credit cards. We're going to skip the salary and wage deductions. Um, I do that a little bit differently, but we will come back to that. We have 10000 that's in the online savings account that I've set aside for an emergency fund. Okay, the next thing would be housing. So we'll set aside half the mortgage payment now because it's, um, as of this date that I'm doing this, it's February 18th. So the mortgage wouldn't be due until after the paycheck because we're assuming this person gets paid um, this Friday. So we'll do half the mortgage payment. And then the best thing to do is just to go line by line and think of what you need um, to pay before your next paycheck. So the key is to um, determine which bills are due right now. So if you have like a utility bill that's due um, in the next week, we're saying that the paycheck is on Friday. Or if you have a cell phone bill or just think of all the bills that are due before then and budget those in full. And then if you have some that are due the next time, you might want to just budget for half and then budget the next half after the paycheck. The next 20 seconds or so is just showing um, setting up each one of these budgeted items. You'll see that we've now budgeted down to zero, which is the goal. It takes a little bit of trial and error at first, but um, eventually you'll be able to get this budgeted to zero fairly quickly. So just a couple notes I wanted to make on your first budget. It's really helpful if you have a list of um, when payments are due. So for example, your mortgage payment, if you have a mortgage or rent, it's probably due on the first, but things like your auto payments, your utility bills, if you make a note and you see when they're due for your initial budget and whether they need to be paid between your initial budget and your next paycheck, you would put that amount in full. So we'll say maybe utilities are $100 and that's due this week. I would put the full 100 here. The next paycheck, I would be able to just set aside half of that. So half for each paycheck. But your initial one, you have to know when they're due to make sure you have money set aside for them. Now we'll assume it's the following week and that all our transactions for the week are on this Visa credit card. All right, so we'll just enter all the spending for the week. We're going to assume even utilities are on this, this Visa card. Next we'll go over, we'll look at what it looks like when you get your first paycheck. So we'll go to big bank checking. We'll add a transaction. We'll just say the paycheck is today from your great paying job. And then we'll do a split transaction. The first one will be inflow to be budgeted. So let's say that your net pay is 2370, but your gross pay each paycheck is 3000. So for, for simplicity purposes, we're just assuming this is a salary and not um, like commissions or, or variable pay. 
Then I'm going to enter each of these deductions. Social Security tax would be about 170. Medicare tax, 35. Do federal and state taxes. Retirement contributions. All right, and we'll say that's it for this person. Um, so just a quick note, this is different than probably anyone else does their YNAB budgeting, but I like to be able to see my payroll deductions, um, both for when I do a tax projection and just in general. I, I want to know how much I'm paying for everything. And I so I want to see my gross salary, and then I want to see every single thing that is an expense to me. So that's why I break out deductions. So of course, since we included an inflow to be budgeted your gross pay, we need to go back and we need to budget for these amounts that we just um, spent. So, Once you've recorded your paycheck in your bank account, you can go back over to budget and then budget um, for each of your deductions. Now we're going to allocate the 2,370 from the paycheck to our various budget categories. So we can just go down. I feel like the best way is to just go line by line and um, put in the number that you need. So it gets a little bit tricky after you get your first paycheck because you already have numbers in there. So you're thinking, what do I need this money for during the next two weeks? Um, also including any savings goals that you're able to contribute to, all of that. So I just want to, to show you real quick. So we'll put in the giving. When you get to the mortgage, YNAB allows you to actually add numbers. So if any of your numbers um, you can't easily do in your head, you can add them directly in YNAB. So we'll just go through and enter all of these. Again, you can go ahead and skip forward about 30 seconds or so if you don't want to watch the whole thing being budgeted. Once that's all done, there'll probably be a little bit of trial and error getting there, but then um, you just keep repeating. Every time you get a paycheck, you just budget it out, and then you want to just keep an eye on this available column to see if um, you've overspent or if you need to adjust your budget a little bit as you go. So that's really all there is to it.